Are you a sad individual living under a prison opera house and dropping chandeliers on people's heads for fun? Well, you may want to stop because that's a crime and get yourself a podcast. How do you do that? Easy. It's with Anchor. Anchor is a totally free app and website, and you can record from your phone or your computer. You don't need fancy smancy equipment. Seriously, I have recorded podcasts from my bathtub while I was bathing. Anchor is free and super easy to use. Anchor has really simple podcasting tools. You sign up and then you start podcasting. It really is that simple. Within an hour of starting my podcast, I was already distributed on Spotify. Now I'm on Spotify, Google Podcasts, Breaker, and Radio Public. So go look for the app or the website. The website is anchor.fm. And the app, just go to your friendly local app store and look up Anchor. That's A-N-C-H-O-R. Happy podcasting! The walls at the mall are totally, totally tall, for sure. Today, we will be discussing The O.C. Season 2, Episode 15, The Mall Pussed, which still, for some reason, sounds dirty to me. I don't know why. I've asked people if they thought the same. They don't. It's just me. Whatever. On we go. Ryan is in the pool house moping because Lindsay has chosen to leave and he's sad because, well, I mean, like, everybody left him. You know? Like, he's, like, thought that he got to a place where he wouldn't get abandoned, but the dude still has, like, serious, serious abandonment issues. And so Seth comes in, and he's like, come on, let's go to breakfast, it's time to cheer up. I mean, that's what it did for you, and Ryan's like, um, no, actually, I I left you alone, like you asked me to, and said, you know, you, you needed your space, and Seth's like, uh, whatever, let's go get pancakes, and Ryan finally gets really annoyed, and he's like, just stop it. And Seth gets hurt, and then Brian apologized to him, and then he explains the thing about being abandoned. And then Seth leaves, and Brian starts packing. Cue theme song. Da 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 da. I can't sing. We have Sandy and Kirsten. Presumably, the next morning after she picked them up at the bus station uh or bus stop i'm not sure but uh things are awkward (laughs) they're really awkward and sandy's trying to be nice and kirsten's like oh but if we pretend nothing happened and sandy's like um nothing did happen and then he notices that kirsten isn't wearing her wedding ring and he's like She's like, well, I don't know where it is. And he's like, well, it probably went down the sink and we'll make sure to find it. And Kirsten's like, well, it's probably not lost. So then she goes out to work and is in her office talking to Julie about the magazine. And Julie is asking why she can't edit it. And Kirsten's like, because you've never edited a magazine before, you doofus. I mean, she doesn't say that, but it's kind of implied. And (laughs) Julie complains that he, the editor, uh, did something called the Ugly Americans. And she's like, but I want to write about beautiful Americans. And Kirsten's like, yeah, whatever. And then Julie is at the window and she happens to see somebody talking to a receptionist and This guy, Lance, is looking for her, and she looks away all shocked. Now, I remember what happens with the storyline. I don't remember seeing this episode, but I do remember what happens with this. So, this will be interesting. So, meanwhile, Sandy is at home, and he's down under the sink doing some plumbing, and Caleb comes in. He's like, aha, I finally see you found your calling. And it's like, really, Caleb, don't be classless and shit on plumbers because they make the world go round. So, off with you. And quite frankly, I would much rather spend time with a plumber than Caleb Nickel. So, anyway, he whines about Lindsay and is like, oh, I lost her. And it's like, dude, you chased her away. 
everything was fine until you put conditions on your fatherhood. You have nobody to blame but yourself. So anyway, then Seth comes in and he makes the same joke that Caleb did. And then <clears throat> they're talking for a while and then he goes out to the pool house because when he was with Summer for the date at the diner, she was like, oh, well, let's all go to the mall together. And Seth was like, uh, yeah, that, that'll that really help Ryan feel better. And Summer's like, you know, you gotta, like, not give up on your friends. And is, like, being all nice and stuff. So that's what Seth was doing. He was going to get Ryan. And Ryan is not there. And he left the note. So Seth snatches the keys and gets to the bus station and is like, Ryan, you, uh, you should come home. And Ryan's like, no, I'm just gonna go to Chicago. I'm not gonna stay there. I just want to see Lindsay. And Seth, uh, correctly, a mad at, is like, um, yeah, Lindsay has had enough surprises, so you might want to tone that down. Come to the mall with me and Summer and Marissa and if you still feel like you need to see Lindsay fine I will drive you to the bus station I will make an excuse for my parents and it'll be fine and Ryan's like okay so Marissa apparently cannot do laundry like she's supposed to be 17 right no 16 because they graduate in season three. So yeah, she would be 16, maybe just from 17. I know that Alex is 17. I don't know. But anyway, so how, like, I don't know. It just seems like a basic school. Like, even if you never have to worry about, it's a, it, does this go back to the thing where Caleb was complaining that, like, he couldn't do his laundry without Julie because, like, they never had a washer and dryer? That's so weird to think about. Like, I can't imagine being so rich that you wouldn't feel the need to have a washer and dryer. Like, to me, that denotes you're broke, you know? Like, if you don't have a washer and dryer, you are broke. I don't know. Uh, I've never been rich, so maybe I'd feel differently about that. So anyway, uh, she tried. Our our girl Marissa, she honestly tried, and she turned all their clothing pink. And Alex is like, uh, this isn't good. And Marissa's like, yeah, who knew you need to separate the laundry? And Alex is like, um, everybody who has done laundry, which is funny because I don't separate the laundry. Like, I've never had any problem with colors bleeding so I I don't know what's about what that's about maybe like rich people just I don't know but I've never bothered with the separating of the laundry so yeah so uh Marissa asks if she and Alice can do something and like Alex is like um yeah I gotta work and she she's kind of snappy about it and I get it. Like, seriously, Alex is the same age as Marissa. And Marissa has been, like, living like a carefree kid. And Alex has basically been an adult because, you know, she's emancipated even though she's a minor. So, in the eyes of law, she's not really a minor. You know what I mean? Like, and then, like, Marissa's just, like, flitting about la la la. I'd be kind of irritated, too. You know, but she's like, well, maybe we can do better, do something later and, like, sit by the water and order takeout. And Marissa's like, fine. And then Alex says that she, they're late on the rent, so avoid the landlord, who apparently is a big fat guy with an I Heart NASCAR tattoo. Only, she never says where the tattoo is, so I'm gonna imagine that it's on this dude's forehead. So later on, Summer comes over to invite Marissa to the mall, and she's like, well, I'm sure that you and Alex have edgy plans, and Marissa's like, no, no, I want to go now, because she was, like, picking up recycling, like, beer bottles, and there was something about skunked beer, which, good grief, how much beer do they drink? Um, but anyway, so, they go. 
Caleb and Sandy are having drinks and apparently Caleb was very helpful with the plumbing and he says his reasoning was is that he feels like crap for alienating Lindsay and wants to do something nice for one of his daughters. Sandy ends up explaining the thing about Rebecca and they talk about Kirsten's ring, which apparently Sandy worked very hard for, and the original one he got her, he apparently got it at an arcade, and Kirsten wore it for months, which is very sweet, and points out what a fool Rebecca was. Like, seriously, I'm sorry, if there was a dude like Sandy, I'd be willing to face this sentence. Like, you know, because apparently, like, she didn't even, like have family or friends or like anybody would miss her wherever she was that's that's just sad so anyway uh julie and kirsten are at the office they're looking at proofs for the magazine and surprise surprise they're all pictures of julie and kirsten's like um don't you think you want some pictures of newport for your newport magazine and julie's like um Hello, if they want to go to the beach, they could walk out and look at the beach. They want to look at some more. And then a guy comes in and turns out his name is Carter. He's the editor and he doesn't want to be there any more than Julie wants him. And basically says, you know what? Do what you want to. That's just fine. I'll let you do whatever and I will collect my paycheck. So, Summer and Seth and Marissa and Ryan end up going to the mall and um, they go to the back of the store to get the clothing for the women's shelter drive and the sales girl who I swear this woman looks so familiar but I don't know I, I can't think of her name like I know I've seen her in something recently and I'm gonna feel really silly but anyway, so she's like, ah, these clothes are tragic. And it's like, wow, that that's so sensitive of you. So they're in there, like, getting ready to organize clothes. Like, Seth and Summer are smooching and generally being obnoxious. And Ryan's like, yeah, I'll do pants. And he tells Marissa to, like, do shirts. And they're like, yeah, okay, sure. And they're working and they're working and they're ready to leave but the door is locked dun 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 so anyway we get to Alice coming home and she looks around and nobody's there so she calls Marissa and leaves a message so they realize at the mall that their cells have no service and they're trying to figure out what to do. Seth unsuccessfully tries to pick a lock after trying to get Ryan to do it. And Ryan's like, why would you think I'm good at picking locks? And it's like, I'm sorry not to be offensive, but dude, you were busted for stealing cars. So it's actually not a bad assumption that you would know how to pick locks. I mean, it's not exactly the same skill sets, but... They they kind of go hand in hand, you know? I, I don't think that that's that offensive. So, <coughs> oh, excuse me. I'm so sorry about that. I didn't get a po chance to hit pause. But anyway, Summer points out a vent which is miraculously big enough for Ryan to fit through. <laughs> and so Seth and Ryan go crawling through the vents trying to find a way and they're talking and Seth's like blah 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 about you know Marissa and Rain's like you know and I told you to be quiet and Seth's like oh yeah sorry about that and Rain's like no no thank you for bringing me out of my shell and Seth's like oh yay and then he falls through a thing in the floor and miraculously doesn't like break anything there's like the sound of broken glass but like when you see him in the next scene he's perfectly fine so go figure but uh anyway so while this is happening 
Summer and Marissa are talking, and they're talking about her relationship with Ryan, and Marissa's like, look, the only person that I've only sleep been in love with is Ryan, but what they don't know is that Ryan can hear them, because Seth was underneath the vent and going back to open and unlock the door, which... Thankfully, the, it, it wasn't a keypad lock, because, uh, yeah, they would have been screwed. So, uh, they're done talking, and Seth kind of walks in, and he's like, oh, hi, Ryan, and then, boom, Ryan's outed, because they realize that he must have been there the whole time, and everything seems like it's going to be really, really awkward. And now it's time for a quick break. So, Summer, Seth, Marissa, and Ryan are stuck in the mall. And they decide to stay in the mall based on logic that, you know, they'll, they'll be fine and nobody will see them. And that the mall opens at 10 a.m. and then they just, just go and have McMuffins. Which, no, I mean, there are people who come before the stores open in the mall. Like, malls usually open at like 8 I think because, like, there are mall walkers, and they walk around the mall before the malls open. So, like, yeah, that's it's very silly. And just shows how out of touch with reality they are. Even Ryan, who doesn't point this out, but maybe he just doesn't spend much time in malls. So, that actually kind of makes sense. So, they decide to hang around the mall, and then they decide uh, to play a game of hockey to determine who gets to sleep where. And they actually call home. Uh, Marissa calls Alex. Summer calls home and talks to, I don't know, like, if it's the help or her mom. Because she mentions her dad. But anyway, they both lie. Seth tells the truth. And Ryan doesn't call anybody because Seth took care of that for them. So, yeah. So then the hockey games happen. And apparently none of them are considering that there would be a security because they're just like wandering around grabbing stuff and when they're playing hockey a ball go down a ball goes down the escalator and they go and grab it and they completely fail to notice that there's a camera. Like a motion sensor camera too. So that's weird. Seth notices the postcard in Summer's bag and flips out about it. And there's this big thing where he's like, oh, I want to know what's in it. And Summer's like, we're just friends. It doesn't matter. You should trust me. And then Marissa or Ryan come up and uh, there's like awkward tension between them. And uh, so anyway... Get back to that, um, because Alex calls, but that happens a little while later. So, Julie Cardi, Cardi, bleh, Julie Carter and Kirsten are at a restaurant having a drink, and who is at the bar but the mysterious Lance? And Lance basically makes innuendo, and he's like, oh, I was your first. And she's like, yeah, whatever. So anyway, he passes her something to, something to her, which turns out to be porn. Um, and Julie gets very freaked out and leaves, claiming that she had food poisoning. And Kirsten's like, but we haven't eaten yet. So anyway, she's home watching the video, which is her, like... I guess it's supposed to be in the 80s because she's wearing workout gear, like extremely 80s looking workout gear. And apparently her character is supposed to have amnesia. It's really confusing. So um, anyway, Alex comes in and she's like, where's Marissa? Because Marissa had said in her message that she was at Julie's and Julie's like, Look, Marissa is using you to get back at me. And believe it or not, she doesn't do it in a mean way. Like, I think she does it in the nicest way that Julie knows how. And it's one of those things where she's kind of right, but she's wrong to say it. Like, at least in that regard. Because, yeah, 
part of it is because Marissa is rebelling. She's realizing that she has all these options that she's never taken advantage of before. And one of the joys is pissing off the woman who basically put her in a box that she she actively resents being in. But, like, I don't think it's entirely conscious, which is really interesting. It's an interesting dilemma. And I'm actually having a lot of more sympathy for the way Alex acts later on. Because, like, I could understand a lot of anger, like, feeling used by somebody who you're really into. But anyway, she's like, like, I've known my daughter and, like, the only one she like really love look different than a white beater and it's like look olivia wilde looks great in a white beater don't don't be making those aspersions julie i mean come on (laughs) but uh anyway so we have caleb and sandy who are teaming up and i really like this scene i thought it was really cute because sandy like his son seth wants to make a grand thing to present to Kirsten and give her another ring from the arcade and he keeps on ending up with keychains so Caleb is there helping him I guess to like continue to make Kirsten happy to make up for what he did to Lindsay and they're, they're gonna try and Caleb's like you don't need a piece of plastic to impress her just Tell her how you feel. And I thought that that was a really nice scene. So anyway, there's Marissa and Ryan. I keep on wanting to say Alex, but no, it's Marissa and Ryan intent. And they're arguing over who gets to sleep in it. And Marissa's like, it can fit four people. It'll fit two of us just fine. And then Alex calls. And Marissa lies and says that she... Oh, no, I decided not to be at Julie's. I'm a summer at her place. And, like, Ryan just, like, gives her this look. And she's like, look, it's not that I think she's jealous. It's just I think that she would be bummed about missing all this. And Ryan's like, "Mm mm-hmm. Sure, whatever. Kirsten and Carter are sitting in the restaurant talking. And man, Carter is a douche. Like, seriously, they're talking and Kirsten's saying, like, well, what's your story about the magazine you had, The Ugly American? It was the most popular travel magazine, blah, blah, blah. And he's like, oh, well, there was a bender and I was getting divorced. And about how he realized his wife wasn't in love with her, him when he saw her wedding room by the kitchen sink. And it's like, okay, I mean, maybe she wasn't in love with you, but that's not anywhere indicative of like not loving somebody I mean that's ridiculous and then he's like oh you're not wearing a wedding ring like that means anything and Kirsten's like well I I lost it I took it off and I couldn't find it and he's like oh well that means a lot and it's like how is this anyway appropriate for a business conversation (laughs) oh my gosh it's just it's so gross and off-putting and I hate Carter but anyway back at the mall Summer and Seth are still arguing over Zach's postcard and like it's it's getting pretty bad because like Seth's like oh why won't you tell me and Summer's like it's none of your business and it really isn't and like just the way Seth is acting I wouldn't want to tell him anyway just to be spiteful but anyway Marissa and Brian are in the tent and they are reminiscing over Thanksgiving where Summer went over to Seth's place and he was chilling with Anna and she was very upset and they were stealing cards for Trey and Ryan's like huh well that's my brother and they're they're getting along pretty well until Summer and Seth rush in and they're like uh there are people here we gotta go and somehow somehow they have the time to set up mannequins sitting in the tent watching the valley i'm not sure how but okay sure that's the thing that could happen because maybe they put the hockey mask on those 
mannequins before, so they were just there. But uh, anyway, the guards find that, and the core four escape and go to eat burgers and chili fries. And Julie, poor Julie, Lance calls her, and I'm not sure how he got her number. Like, is her private number publicly listed in the phone book? I'm not sure. But anyway, so he calls her, and she's like, Okay, fine, I'll give you $50,000. And he's like, no, I want $500,000 or I'll sell this tape on the internet. And it's like, oh, what do I tell people, she says. And he's like, well, you can tell them that, you know, your mother was sick and your your sister was pregnant or whatever. And, you know, honestly, why not? Like, seriously, she needed the money. She was desperate. Somebody took advantage of her. Like, how... I don't know, but then again, it's Caleb, and he's a horrible person, so she's probably right to be terrified. Anyway, so, yeah, that's what's going on here. The the core four are still in the car, and Summer and Seth are still arguing about Zach's postcard, and it's just getting really obnoxious so they stop at a diner and Marissa Ryan and getting out and they're like yeah we'll go and we'll save you both okay bye and Seth and Summer are left in the car and finally they come to an agreement that they'll stop arguing if Summer shows on the postcard and it's nothing it's shocker I know it's like Zach was being nice and like at the end he's like say hi to Seth that's it so they realize that they've been being horrible and that couple that nobody wants to be around and they're like oh no Marissa and Ryan seem stable compared to us which yeah kinda but uh yeah so that's and Marissa and Ryan are in the diner and they're talking about how now they've basically been apart more than they've been together and it seems like they're strangers and <coughs> Marissa's like okay so who are you and Ryan says what the French Ryan is about whoever you want me to be which if you don't remember is what he said and the pilot when he first met marissa which i still feel is weirdly out of character but at that time he was smoking a cigarette so and apparently at that time marissa had never seen a cigarette in her life so that that scene like if you go back to watch that scene it's a very funny but i don't think it was intended to be it just is so anyway uh Sandy is waiting in the bedroom and Kirsten comes home and she's like, oh, I didn't know that it would be so late. And Sandy's like, look, I'm sorry for making you ever think that I doubted our love. And he gets her, he puts a ring on her finger that is from an arcade and then goes to take a shower and Kirsten goes to her, like, bedside table, whatever, and pulls out a jar, and voila, there is the ring, which I'm sure everybody figured out, like, she did early lose it, because that looks like a pretty pricey ring, and that seems like something that you'd be more freaked out over, just because, like, you know, like, I mean, not only monetary value, but because of like what it would mean like even if she was having doubts about Sandy like you know I mean Price is in like their years together like her reaction just seemed off from the beginning I, I don't know man but in between this are a shots of Alex and Julie looking very sad for various different reasons and that is the end of the episode. Hope you enjoyed listening as much as I enjoyed making it. Bye!